Hello. Today we're going to be doing a lesson on partial quotients part two. In our first lesson we learned how to divide using a single digit divisor and today we're going to learn how to divide using a two digit divisor. So our math message today goes like this. Egg cartons hold 12 eggs. How many cartons do you need to pack 246 eggs? So as always, there are different strategies that we could use to, to try to solve this problem, of course. Um, we could draw a picture. We could use base 10 blocks and do some trading. We could use our division algorithm. Okay. So... What we need to think about is how many 12s are in 246. This is division, of course. And these are the four different ways that we could write this particular division problem. All of them say 246 divided by 12. But notice we have different symbols that we use to show that that is a division problem. So we're going to use a multiplication division chart like we've done in the past and we're going to fill in what we know. We know that there's 12 eggs per carton and we know that there's 246 total. What we're trying to find is how many cartons. So in this lesson, we're going to do two-digit divisors to divide, just like I stated earlier. And we're going to set this problem up just like we did before with our one-digit divisors, except, of course, we have two-digit divisors, um, and this is a different problem. So 400 divided by 22. So I picked 10 for my first number there on my right as, as part of my answer. Remember, a partial quotient is part of the answer, right? We're, we're, we keep doing parts of it until we finally get done, and then we add all those parts together, and then we have the quotient. So I go ahead and multiply my 10 times my 22. That's how I got my 220. I do my subtraction. I have 180. I can still take several 22's from that 180. So I'm going to pick 5 this time. And 5 times 22 is going to give me 110. I do my subtraction, I get 70. And now I'm going to do 122. I've got 1 times 22 is 22. I do my subtraction. I get 48 left. I can still take some 22's from that. I'm going to do one more. And I do my subtraction. And now I've got 122 left. And you can't see because I couldn't fit it on the screen there. But once I do my subtraction, I should have a remainder of 4 for that problem. But I've got to add my numbers, my partial quotients on that right side to get my the rest of my answer. So that adds up to 18, remainder 4. Now I'm going to take that same problem and I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to use different numbers this time just to show you there's more than one way to do this. So I'm going to start with 10. That part is the same. But what if I did 5 next, like I did the last time, but then I'm going to start changing my numbers. So this time I'm going to do 322's, because that's a little bit closer to 70 than taking 1. Notice now I still have a remainder of 4, like I did before in the first problem. And when I add my numbers, my partial quotients on the right side, they still add up to 18, which I forgot to put on there. Um, and then we move that 18 up to the top of our division bar. We put the 18 there. We move the remainder up to the top. And as you can see, I've got the same answer. I just did the problem a little bit differently. I picked different numbers. OK. 
okay? All right, and this is even another way to do that same problem. I picked 10 to start with, and then I did eight 22s the second time. So there were three different ways, three different ways to pick numbers to do that same problem. I got the same answer with the same remainder. Okay, and here are two more examples where I have 743 divided by 12. Same problem on both sides there. You can see that I started with the number 50 in both problems. But then I changed my numbers after that. So the first problem, I started with 50, did my multiplication, did my subtraction. I had 143 left. Then I put a 5 over here, multiplied 5 times 12 because I knew that was 60. Subtract, I got 83 left. I did another 5. 5 times 12 is 60 once again, subtracted, I got 23, and then I did 1 times 12, which is 12, and I had 11 left over. So I added up my 50, my 5, my 5, my 1, I got 61, and then moved that 61 up to the top of my division bar, and moved my 11 up there because I can't take any 12s from 11, so that means I'm done dividing. So this one has a pretty big remainder of 11. So if we look at the second problem, I started with uh, 50 like we did in the first, multiplied 50 times 12, got my 600, got 143 after I subtracted, then I put a 10, multiplied 10 times 12, got 120, subtracted that from my 143, I had 23 left. Then I did my 1 times 12, subtracted from 23, and I got 11 as my remainder on this side, just like I got over here on the left. I added my 50, my 10, my 1, I got 61, just like I did here on the left. So my answer is 61, remainder 11. Same problem, done a couple of different ways. Same answer. Okay, so let's review here. We've got 112 divided by 14. I'm going to pick 4 this time. I'm going to multiply 4 times 14. And of course, if you don't know how to do that in your head, which most of you probably won't, off to the side, you're going to have to multiply 14 times 4. Figure out what that is. And it's 56. So I subtract that from my 112. I get 56 left. Hmm. I think I'm going to use 4 again. Multiply times 14 get my 56 and in this instance I don't have a remainder. I'm going to add my 4 and my 4 equals 8. Move that up to the top. So 112 divided by 14 equals 8. Notice I did not put an R up there because when you don't have a remainder you don't need to put that. Okay. Alright, summarize what we've done today. We are using partial quotients to divide with two-digit divisors, and it works the same as the one-digit divisor. So the process is the same, we just have to do a little bit harder multiplication problems. What I want you to remember is the multiplication and division relationship is very important. You need to understand how those are related to one another to help you with division. Thank you for watching.